Hello and welcome to the High with a Health Show. My guest for today is Spiro Kalouris, a leading gout diet expert. He's an author and the prolific blogger behind goutandyou.com. Spiro has dedicated his life to inspiring people to live a gout-free life, mainly through dietary and lifestyle interventions. In this episode, we talk about gout, why it was known as the King's disease, its symptoms, and many other things. If you or someone you know suffers from gout, you know how incapacitating the pain can be. The good news is there is light at the end of the tunnel. As you will learn in this episode, while doctors have known for a long time that certain foods trigger gout, it is people like Spiro who have identified the most common culprits and learned to avoid them. I'm personally not convinced about this dietary approach, to be honest, but I also don't suffer from gout, and so I must take Spiro's findings at face value. But one thing is for sure, he's not the only one benefiting from this approach. If you look at his blog, the reviews of his book, and several other testimonials, his approach has helped literally thousands of gout sufferers. Now, before we go on to today's episode, I want to remind you that we're still taking applications for our group coaching program. I currently don't have any more openings for one-on-one work, but we do welcome people still into our group programs. To learn more and to apply, just head on over to dre.show forward slash coach. That's dre.show forward slash coach. In any case, I don't want to keep you any longer. Here's my conversation with Spiro Colores. And remember, you are on the highway to health and I'm your guide to get you there. Are you ready to live ageless? Want to discover alternative health choices, cutting edge nutrition, and fitness for the entire family? Welcome to Highway to Health Show with your host, Dr. E, the stem cell guy, where Dr. E helps you live ageless. And now, here's your host, Dr. E. So Spiros, hello, welcome to the Highway to Health Show. How are you today? Good yourself, Dr. Ed. Very glad to be here. Awesome, awesome. So why don't you why don't you say hi to our audience as well and share with us a little bit of, of what got you started in this in this health journey of yours? Uh, well, hi guys. Uh, my name is Spiro Kaloris. I've been a gout sufferer since the age of 26. In my case, it's more genetic. Uh, I suffer from a little um, thalassemia. Uh, which is a blood disorder, and usually that's probably the the culprit of why I got gout so young. But usually gout affects 2 to 4% of the general population. I know in the U.S. it affects about uh, 8 million people, I believe, uh, up until 2019, the last numbers we, we've checked. And basically it affects people at an older age, usually 50, 60, and above. Um, the majority, I would say three quarters, usually affects men compared to women. A woman will are at a higher risk of developing gout after menopause. So basically, uh, ever since I got gout, I want to learn more about it. Uh, when I got my first episode at the age of 26, uh, I did not believe I had gout. When I went to visit my doctor, uh, he told me I had gout. I said, what is that? He said, uh, basically, it's an arthritic condition. Uh, you have high uric acid. I'm like, no, it's probably, you know, I hit, I hit my foot somewhere. Uh, you know, can we do an x-ray? He knew right away it was gout. We did the blood test and it confirmed high uric acid levels in the blood. So then it's, uh, it sunk in. And basically I remember I was crippled in the big toe, um, my left foot and in the right knee. So I had to walk in crutches for a few weeks. Um, I had to take colchicine, which is a medication that reduces inflammation quickly, uh, along with allopurinol. So in gout, you have two major medications to treat, uh, usually colchicine when you have an attack, uh, to get rid of the attack uh, within a few days or a couple of weeks. Uh, and then allopurinol is the medication for more of the long-term treatment of gout, uh, which helps to control uric acid levels in the blood uh, and maintain them below uh, six uh, millimeter. Uh, I forget the, the term exactly, but it's a score. Uh, of six below uh, in your body instead of six and above, uh, which uh, risks you having painful inflammation and gout attacks and flare-ups and so on. I see, I see. And so this happened at age 26, which is surprisingly early for gout. Yeah, it's a min- I'm in the minority. Not too many get it this young, uh, but it is increasing at alarming rates. Uh, in U.S. and U.K., there's a lot of reports of young people in their 20s and 30s getting their first episodes of gout. 
And this is all due to uh, bad lifestyle, bad eating habits, uh, the Western diet of you know, too much red meat, too much alcohol, too much sugar. Uh, and that, uh, unfortunately, is increasing. It's a negative trend in our society. So let's back up a little bit here. Can you share with, with us and you know, with our audience, what is gout other than, I mean, you, you mentioned that it is, it is an arthritic, it's a rheumatoid condition, but what are the symptoms of gout? The symptoms of gout, basically, um, everybody has uric acid. It's a chemical in the body, uh, travels in the blood. We all expel it through the kidneys and flush it out through urine. Uh, but gout sufferers, unfortunately, uh, do not expel as much, so it stays in the body. And what happens is uh, it crystallizes. Uh, it becomes these tiny needles that uh, like to attack the joints. So it could be mostly it's in the big toe, but it could affect also the elbow, the hands, uh, knees. Uh, but the major- for the majority, it's in the foot area, usually the big toe. Uh, and it's painfully hot. You cannot walk. You're limping. Uh, even at night, if you're sleeping and you put on your bed sheet, uh, you can't even tolerate that. So uh, basically, that is the symptom uh, most of the time, yeah. I see. And in your case, did it happen pretty much just overnight? One day you woke up with this terrible pain? Yeah, usually happens in the middle of the night for the majority of gout sufferers. So uh, you'll go to sleep and you'll be rudely awakened around 2, 3 a.m. with this painful inflammation in the toe. Uh, You can't even sleep the first day or two until you get uh, some treatment. Um, I know uh, you can take ibuprofen or Advil, right, um, to get the edge off so it can make the pain more bearable. Um, I recommend to gout sufferers, if they don't have any medication, to, to put some ice pack, uh, ice pack a couple of times a day or maybe soak their joint uh, in Epsom salt in warm water a couple of times a day uh, to loosen those muscles and that inflammation up. Um, there's other remedies out there uh, that you can apply, um, but basically uh, that's what it entails. Yeah, I see. It's very now- painful. When I went to school, I remember that you know we learned that gout used to be called the disease of the rich. Yes. That's uh, right. That's right. And that has I, a history. Uh, it has a history with the kings and queens of Western Europe uh, a few centuries back. Why? Because the kings and queens and the aristocracy had access to all the rich foods, the, the red wines, the fine wines, right? The meats. Uh, whereas the peasants, uh, they would eat more, uh, whatever they would farm, uh, uh, think of, uh, you know, wheat, uh, vegetables, uh, fruits, uh, they didn't have access to that much meat, right? Meat was, uh, not, uh, as abundant as it is today, uh, in those days. So, uh, yeah, it used to affect mostly the, the rich and kings and queens of, uh, Western Europe. And that's where it got this stigma. I see. Yeah, exactly. That's a, so that's the reason usually you would, you know, it's, it's from feasting and from not just from yeah. eating a lot, but from eating a certain type of food. Is this correct? Yeah, there are certain foods that are, um, you're more prone to get a gout attack. So if your diet is rich in uh, lots of red meat, seafood, organ meats, processed meats, alcohol, you're at a higher risk of developing gout. And that's, interesting. Uh, that's what I advocate in my uh, gout diet plan is to stay away from uh, those foods because those are the foods that have the highest purines, uh, uh, which is a uh, compound uh, in all foods, but uh, is more, uh, of, you know, there's more of it in uh, meat, uh, seafood, uh, and so on, alcohol, uh, and your body won't metabolize that as easily. Uh, and that raises uric acid level. So the more purines you eat, the more you raise your uric acid level. Now, in your experience, is this something that is that is true across the board, or is this something that certain people are more likely to suffer from? And the reason I ask is because nowadays you see a, a lot of people doing keto, which in reality isn't really keto. Uh, most people, when they start going into it, they just they just eat a lot of, of protein, a lot of meat, a lot of animal products, which isn't necessarily bad from my point of view. I personally am currently doing a, a carnivore period of time, um, yeah. but, but I'm curious to know, in your experience, is this something that, that would just happen across the board or you just, would I be racing uh, my risk of developing gout or not unless I was part of that population? 
I don't recommend the keto paleo diet for gout sufferers because it's high in meat. Um, I know the keto is a bit different. Uh, I mean, you have your fats. Uh, the percentages for the fat and protein is higher, but you, you could eat more better, better fats like avocados, olive oil, and so on. Uh, but too much meat in the long term, in my opinion, is not uh, a healthy diet. Um, you are at risk of developing gout, arthritis, and other diseases. And you can look at the research. There's a lot of research that, uh, that I've looked at that states that. So uh, you're also at a higher risk of colorectal cancer uh, and other diseases. So it's not a diet I recommend. I recommend uh, gout sufferers stick to a diet I call the 80-10-10 diet, which comprises of eating 80% of your daily calories as complex carbohydrates. So that would be fresh vegetables, legumes, beans, uh, whole grains, so 100% whole grain uh, pasta, uh, which I love to eat, 100% whole grain rice, 100% whole grain bread. So that should be, because your body me metabolizes those foods rather easily. The kidneys and liver uh, work easier to break it down compared to meat and alcohol. Uh, so it doesn't raise uric acid levels as much. And I would recommend after that 10% of your daily calories to be meat. So you can have lean chicken breast, fresh fish, uh, not seafood though. Um, no organ meats, no processed meats, turkey, some red meat, make sure it's always lean, uh, not too fatty. Uh, and the final 10% of your daily calories should consist of fat, uh, like uh, eggs, milk, low-fat cheese, uh, some Greek yogurt, butter, and so on. Uh, the danger zone for gout sufferers is animal-based foods. So fat, that's why I limit fat and protein at 10% each, because that's the danger zone. Now, if you could go 100% co complex carbohydrates and be a full vegetarian, even better for you. But I do leave some room, because uh, obviously not everybody wants to be a vegetarian. Uh, some people want to enjoy a good steak from time to time. I see. Uh, but my question was more geared towards, I mean, obviously I wouldn't recommend a, a, a you know, carnivore approach for, for a gout sufferer, um, you know, wash it down with a glass of red wine. But for the average, for the regular person, um, do you think that eating this way actually increases the risk of, of developing gout or is gout something that only certain people will develop under the right circumstances? I know you might not have the exact answer. I'm just not really asking. really because I know with keto, I have a lot of folks, gout sufferers who write in and they told me they tried keto and they got a gout attack uh, after a year or so. Yeah, but these are diagnosed uh, gout sufferers. Yes. So it doesn't work really for gout sufferers. Not I'm paleo, same thing. Uh, for others, if you continue eating that way, um, excuse me, let me ask the question, what is the percentage uh, ratio that they recommend for uh, protein intake for the keto right now? Well, on keto, there, there's different uh, schools 30. of thoughts. Uh, you're talking about 20, 20, 30. So proper keto is high fat. The problem yeah, is that when, when people start dropping the carbs, the, the natural tendency is to increase the amount of animal products that they consume, uh, and, and that brings the protein consumption up. So a, a lot of the times, people aren't really doing keto because they're not really high fat. They're mostly high protein, or they're just very That's low right. carb what, with high protein. So real, real keto is, is high fat. Um, you know, you're talking somewhere around 70%. Uh, 70, 70, 75% fat with about 20%, uh, with 20%, 20 to 20% um, uh, protein with the rest being fat, with, with the rest being carbs, keeping them under 50. Fat found grams. from animal foods uh, compared Either to. Either one. I mean, I, I, I know people yeah. who do, I know people who do uh, vegetarian or vegan keto, which I'm probably yeah. very hard, but there are a few. Yeah, it's not something I really, uh, I'm an expert in. I'm not an expert in the keto diet. I knew uh, enough that, uh, uh, and through the studies that I've researched that it doesn't work for gout sufferers. But for the regular person, hey, uh, maybe not. Uh, a lot of people suffer from hyperuricemia, which is high uric acid and they're not symptomatic. So you could go on through life maybe having high uric acid, but never developing the symptoms of gout. 
So that could occur. Uh, but from the blue zone studies, uh, the areas in the world where people live longest, I would say that the key diet has always been eating complex carbohydrates. Uh, so lots of vegetables, lots of greens, uh, some fruit, uh, whole grains with some fresh fish, some meat. Like in Greece and the, the Mediterranean diet, uh, you have Japan, another blue zone, lots of fish, and complex carbs. So for, for longevity, and look at Tom Brady uh, from the Patriots. He's a vegetarian and uh, he's playing, wants to play at least to 45, 46. And he advocates that uh, uh, the key diet is not eating a lot of protein for him. Uh, it's eating mostly uh, vegetarian, uh, which is uh, complex carbs. So, I mean, it's a big debate, I know, on the internet. I, I get a lot of keto guys uh, <laughs> who are not uh, so nice and not uh, I think very everything. I think media. everything is a big debate and, uh, you know, yeah. on, on the internet. And, yeah. and I've, you know, I've been, I've been all across the board. Like I said, I've, I've, done, I've done vegan. I did a completely vegan diet for two years, close to two years, and it started really, really good. And then it stopped serving me. So, so I changed mm -hmm. and I went towards more of a, of a, paleo at first then it became keto more like the bulletproof uh clean that's that's what i focus on a lot more now so in quality not not necessarily in macronutrients and things like that i'm currently like i said i'm currently doing a 75 day challenge of of, of strict uh carnivore and i'm feeling great so far but the funny thing is that most eating regimes especially those elimination diets, which is what happened when I went vegan. Uh, I came from a standard diet and suddenly you go vegan. And I believe that a big part of the benefit is just dropping all of that crap that, that, that we're normally consuming. So whenever you go into an elimination diet, there's, there's this honeymoon phase and you're feeling great because you're removing a lot of, of potential mm -hmm. triggers of inflammation. Um, and you start feeling great. And then it's, it's just a matter of figuring out what, what works for you. The more, the more I look into it in my case, um, or, or from my perspective, is the more I start seeing certain groups of people who thrive on one diet or another. And, and it doesn't necessarily tell us that this is the way we need to eat. We're all different. Our microbiome is different. Our genes are different. The way we use nutrients is different. The way, yeah. the way people developed in the world was different because... Yeah, there's no one template for everybody. That's right. Exactly. You know, th yeah. think about 300 years ago, people who lived in completely different areas of the world it's not like today that you can get mangoes from south america that's year right. round that's anywhere right. <laughs> back mm -hmm. then it's like if you didn't live nearby you weren't getting them so it's not like you could add them to your diet right or avocados yeah. or anything along those lines yeah yeah makes sense definitely now currently and ever since you 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 were diagnosed you started learning about this Tell me more about your 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 day to day. Is this is this something that mm -hmm. that you currently do helping you know gout sufferers? In what sense you mean? Uh, uh, like, I, I'm sorry, through my blog or well through the blog, and I know that you wrote a book, and 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 I know you're very yeah. active there. So yeah, so basically, I do. I'm an author. I've written a book about uh, the ultimate gout diet and cookbook. So there, uh, I go into more detail of what the 80-10-10 diet consists of, um, and then give out some recipes for people to get for gout sufferers to get started. Uh, and through the blog, uh, I've posted over 150, 160 articles to this date on different topics on gout. So I help the community that way. Uh, there's a lot of comments in each article. Uh, a lot of debates, uh, especially with some foods, right? Uh, there's always those foods that are debatable, like tomatoes, mushrooms, everybody, you know, 50% will say it affects them. Another 50 will say it never That's what I was going to ask you about. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's not clear cut for everybody. Like you said, there's no one template for everybody. So at the end, you got to listen to your body. Uh, and um, maybe, uh, you know, I, I always recommend maybe have a diary and then, you write down everything you eat and then notice the patterns. And if you feel anything different in your body, like a flare up, uh, you could pinpoint it and find maybe a pattern there. Yeah, you just mentioned two things that I was just going to bring up. And one of them is uh, so big, which is this diary. And, and, and just keeping a journal of what you're eating, especially when you yeah. have, when you're prone 
to having these certain triggers, whether they're, and I always ask, I always recommend this to, to our patients uh, whenever anyone is suffering from an autoimmune disorder. There are a lot of triggers that they're constantly exposed to, and, and it can be foods, but it can also be environmental. And if they, if they get into the yeah. habit of, of keeping a journal, they will yeah. be able to look back and figure out like, oh, you know what, whenever I go to that place, I start developing this or whenever I eat this, I start having those things. So I think that's a very, very important thing to do. Yeah. And that's where you'll notice patterns about your body and yourself. Yeah. And the other thing I was going to ask you about was uh, upon reading uh, Dr. Gundry's book, The Plant Paradox, you start learning about a lot of these things. Specifically, he talks a lot about lectins, but there's also the different issues with nightshade vegetables. And yeah. That's another popular debate with gout sufferers. That's right. The exactly. Peppers. So I, 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 I was wondering what was your experience within this particular community that are so susceptible to diet? It's in the middle. These yeah. Things? It's in the middle. Uh, the jury's not out on that one. Um, for myself, they don't affect me, but for many others, it does. Uh, so that's a category of food where you definitely uh, need to test that out and see if you react to it negatively, positively, and uh, act accordingly. So uh, that's uh, another popular one. Mushrooms is another one. Yeah. Uh, like so I for said, our sure listeners, uh, nightshade vegetables, and correct me if I'm wrong or, or if I'm missing any of these, uh, the most common ones that we have in our diets are tomatoes and uh, aubergines and the yeah. peppers, different kinds of peppers, yeah. correct? Peppers, and yeah. what else am I missing here? There, there's, there's a few more. I think you, yeah, a few I more. I mean, those are the big uh, ones. Those are the main ones, the big ones, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That, that a lot of people don't react at all. Like, for instance, our son, we have a two-year-old, and mm. we noticed that whenever he ate uh, aubergine or he'd, he'd start scratching his nose and he'd start oh. like, like going like this, and, and he liked it, but, but then he started – putting two and two together. And it's crazy how, you know, as early as just a year old, when we started just, just feeding him solids, right? Uh, a little bit before that, let's say nine months old, and we started feeling, feeding him solids. He started doing these things, and then he, on his own, he started rejecting it. So Yeah, that's all in the DNA. Everybody's DNA is different, and some foods affect you more than others. And Yeah. Yeah, but but what's, what's, really, what's really telling is that, at nine months old without really knowing one thing or another, intuitively, he was already rejecting them. And, and a lot yeah. of the times, us as adults, we don't pay attention to how we're feeling. We just keep yeah. eating whatever it is. And we don't realize until we suddenly remove it. And it happens a lot yeah. with people who eat gluten. And suddenly, they realize that they're intolerant or people who keep eating dairy and, and, and they're intolerant of that. So... Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure this happens a lot as well with the community well, that you serve. For me, one example is tomatoes. One summer, uh, and usually my mother will plant tomatoes in August, right? Well, earlier than that, but they, they come out in August, and I would have a lot of Greek salads every day. And then I noticed a flare-up after eating Greek salad day in, day out. Uh, so uh, tomatoes is something I watch out for and I set aside. I don't eat that much of uh, whereas others can eat plenty and uh, they won't get a flare-up. And it is the tomatoes? Cause, I mean, the, the green salad's got the tomatoes and it's got the green peppers, correct? If I recall correctly. Uh, yeah, although I didn't make them with tomatoes. Uh, I used uh, onion, tomatoes, uh, cucumber, and feta Cuc- cheese. Yeah, yeah, cucumber, of course. Yeah. I love Greek salads. I, I was just trying to, <laughs> obviously the feta cheese, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, that's what about, that, that's another interesting one. What about, what about cheeses? Because I've heard that cheeses do tend yeah. to affect a lot of people. Or is it just the aged cheeses? Oh boy, uh, with gout, not really. It's, I mean, you have to limit your fat intake. Uh, there's so much selection with cheeses. Um, I know feta is considered one of the healthiest. Um, again, the less processing, I would say the healthier, right? The more processing, probably that the worst is for you. I see. Now, you've mentioned once or twice uh, that you refer to the diet or the, the eating plan that you recommend the 80 10 10. This has got nothing to do with, with that. Doug Graham's, Graham's uh, yeah, you know, yeah. crazy. Yeah, that's where I borrowed from. It's not my diet. I didn't. Okay. Uh, I but didn't but his was, was a completely fruitarian thing. Oh, no, not the fruitarian. No, not eating fruit. Uh, this is the uh, 10 10. Yeah, I mean, it's changed. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it, it is a proportion. Google search so it. Yeah, it's a proportion uh, diet, but 80% uh, 
carbohydrate 10, protein 10, fat, uh, you could call it 8, 10, 10, although his uh, was different. Uh, and, and there's a lot of confusion I find with all diets, but even with keto, right? Like yeah. you were mentioning before, some people uh, eat too much protein and so on. But uh, in this case, uh, I didn't invent it. If anything, I altered it. Uh, this is research I did on my own uh, and tested. And um, also research done by Dr. Choi from, uh, I forget which hospital in Boston. He's the leading gout researcher uh, and professional uh, that's conducted many studies uh, with a lot of big gout population over the years. Uh, and these foods always came out the best. It's always the complex carbs and limiting your fat and protein intake. I see. I see. Yeah. I mean, and once again, it's it's just it's just proof that in specific conditions for specific kinds of people, different diets can work. And and there's not a single single size fits all fits all. Uh, because we're it seeing this on the right disease here. You su- if you suffer from a disease, obviously there is a diet for that to treat or to help that specific uh, disease that you're suffering from. Because most of the time, and it doesn't matter what kind of condition, but with gout is very obvious and we know that the link is right there, but for everything else, most of the time, what we're seeing as physicians when we see people in our offices is that their nutrition had to do with the development of whatever they came in with. Uh, yeah. It is our number one. It's a long history. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is the number one source of inflammation, whatever we're putting in our bodies. Uh, yes. You know, chronic source of inflammation. So obviously there's, there's differences, but, but the more abused, the more, the more processed, I agree with you, the more sugars, the more crap that we eat, of course, it's going to put us in, uh, on the wrong path. So, so that's, that's also very, very important to note. Now, Mm-hmm. Going back a little bit towards your own experience, and obviously now you probably know the experience of a lot of different people, are there any warning signs that gout might be developing? Is there something that Ooh, the person who really. today has never had gout can kind of like be on the lookout for? No, not really. You're probably just going to get a surprise attack and that starts at all. Oh, that sounds there's like fun. no warning. <laughs> yeah, there's no warning signs whatsoever. It comes out of the blue. And you have to deal with it, unfortunately. I see. Well, and, and that's part of the reason why it's so shocking. And like you said, if, if, if it is something that is building up because of our diet, it would be nice to know before it actually happens, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, in my case, I was, I was obese at that time, right? I was at 240 pounds. I was eating lots of burgers. I, I love burgers. I love uh, minced meat. I love sugary beverages like Coca-Cola. Uh, I love going to McDonald's. I liked a lot of fried food. Um, and cooking is very important. I always advocate not to fry or not to stir fry, even try and bake barbecue, right, or boil uh, more than frying. Um, what happens when I was, you fry? Well, you're obviously, uh, well, you're kidding. You're, you're killing all the... Uh, nutrients of the food anyways and you're raising your cholesterol by inputting that right uh and it's toxic at the end of the day it's toxic you're eating whatever you're frying it's basically toxic to your body Uh, and you're more prone to disease right uh and weight gain unfortunately so uh i was 240 pounds and in bad shape and it was a long history of my bad eating habits that caused this and so you went in, you saw the doctor, he gave you treatment. And was it at that time that you decided to, to really turn your life around? Or did you just say, oh, I'm just going to get past this one and then that's it? No, it, yeah, it took a while to absorb, uh, took a, a long time to deal with it. Uh, I went off the pill thinking that I could treat it myself. In my case, it's genetic, although I do have a lot of gout sufferers that write in that uh, can treat it with diet. My case is genetic. It didn't work out. So I had to accept the fact that I had to take allopurinol for life. Although I don't take much, I only take 100 milligrams per day. Uh, and the rest I exercise and I eat properly. Uh, I don't drink. I used to drink a lot. That was another culprit of causing my gout. I used to, I was younger, right? Uh, and I uh, used to drink a lot of whiskey with Coke too. So that was a double whammy. And, um, yeah, uh, so I, after that, it evolved and I started doing research. And as I was doing research, I had the idea to help people with gout. There wasn't that much information about it. There was no blog really out there. So I, I developed the blog, start writing, uh, and always backing up 
my research with studies uh, in the scientific community, and uh, and here we are today. Yeah, I've I've always I've always found it a very interesting about this this one phenomenon that's been happening in the last few years, thanks to the internet and to that interconnectedness. That something that you know, there's eight million people in the U.S. Um, you know, suffering yep. from gout. Which, when you look at it, it's 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 a bunch of people. It's a very large city full of gout sufferers. Yeah. But when yeah. you look at it from from the big perspective, out of three hundred million Americans, it's not so many. It's small. Yeah. So you might it's go small. through life not knowing anybody else who has gout. Uh, if yeah, you develop but it, or you might. Gout has sisters and brothers and cousins like arthritis, psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis. You know, osteoarthritis. So it's all in the same family. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Get, but, yeah, but if somebody doesn't get gout, maybe you get arthritis, right? Yeah. So. But what it, the the point that I wanted to make is that thanks to something like thanks to the internet, you are now able to go online and start talking about what you've been finding, and and you start mm-hmm. connecting with all these different people, and 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 yeah. they start benefiting from that and also contributing to it, and that's how we're seeing all these all these different. Uh, clusters of patients, and it's something that I that I saw a lot in my background, and in regenerative medicine and, and doing stem cell treatments, mostly for patients with autism during my clinical years. Mm-hmm. We saw how the autistic community has come together, and and thanks to a lot of these different things. And of course, autism has been on the rise, uh, unfortunately. But also before that, because we've had we've had their families who have you know have thirty five year olds with autism, and they used to say like, you know what, when he was two or three or four. We knew nobody. It was, you know, you knew that it happened, but but it wasn't as common. You didn't have anybody to talk to. You didn't have anybody to 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 find out more about, to learn from. So yeah. so I think this has been a, a tremendous resource. And and you just shared it. You know, your blog has brought together a lot of these people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Awesome, and it has also enriched your own knowledge. And, and that's part of the treatment, right? You have to learn uh, the ins and outs of uh, dieting, medication, what's out there, uh, other people's experiences, uh, and sharing your experience with others. So you could crowdsource answers and yeah, and help yourself. Now you mentioned exercise. That is something that you're currently yeah. doing as well. What kind of exercises are you doing? Well, for myself, uh, I do some weight training and some cardio uh, three, four times a week, and I recommend. Any type of exercise, uh, I don't care how old you are. If you're 80, go and walk as much as you can each day. Just move your body. Get it moving. Don't get rusty. Don't slow down. Move your body. It's going to help your uric acid levels. Exercise has known to lower uric acid levels and strengthen, strengthen the joints. So uh, get out there. Do anything. Do, but for gout sufferers, I recommend uh, if – Joint pain is an issue. Um, you could try uh, cycling. Um, that's not tough on the joints. Uh, swimming, great exercise. Uh, that's not tough on the joints. Uh, those two are, are the top two exercises I recommend for folks that uh, might have some joint pain and can't do the weight training or uh, other more strenuous uh, exercises. Yeah, for sure. And one of the most important things uh, when you're talking about gout and in and- it is caused, I mean, all the symptoms of the development of the disease is caused by the accumulation of this, these uric acid crystals. So the more that you can get your blood pumping and flowing and, and not yeah. stagnant, the less likely these, these crystals are going to form. Is, yeah, is that yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah. And it strengthens the, the bones uh, as well. Because um, gout over time deteriorates. Uh, you, get, you can get bone erosion uh, over years. Uh, you may, you know, get injured uh, easier uh, and so on. So it's something that you have to uh, change your lifestyle uh, and add exercise uh, in your daily life. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we're very big on on, on staying active and, and having uh, movement um, here. And we've, we've discussed this and from several various fronts from, from mental health to being able to focus yeah, to true. longevity to mm-hmm. pretty much anything. I mean, I had I had a, a, a teacher, one of my mentors in age management medicine, and he used to say that if you know if if we could have the results and the benefits of exercise in a pill, that that oh, would be yeah. it. I mean, <laughs> that <that's>, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't need anything else because it, it really it really is involved in everything. And it's just a matter of, of the modern lifestyle that that brings us to this sedentary life. Which thinking about it, 
if you stop and think about gout back in the day with the history of it being a disease of the of the rich and the wealthy you don't see a lot of kings doing a lot of manual labor or going out and exercising or yeah. jogging or doing anything that's like right. that it's, so that might as well have benefit uh, you know contributed to it that's right it makes sense yeah it's more sedentary our lifestyle now is going at an office sitting eight hours a day usually in a cubicle coming home sitting on the couch watching tv so yeah get out there and uh, get moving for sure, for sure. And, and stay active throughout the day because that's another big thing that we've noticed. Uh, as, as the tendency starts growing and people start going to the gym and things like that, we see that a lot of people are very active and then sedentary for the rest of the day. So they wake up, they go to the gym, they, yeah. they work out for 45 minutes and then they sit down, they sit in traffic for an hour while they commute to work. They sit at the office for eight hours, then they sit in traffic again and they sit at home, but they feel good about themselves because they worked out in the morning. And in reality, it's like, you know, it's, it's actually better to, to try to stay active throughout the day, stand up, walk a little bit, don't park yeah, as close to the Try and do at least 10,000 steps if you can also a day. Awesome. Awesome. So, We've so far covered some of the common culprits. Um, you know, you, you mentioned a lot of animal products. You mentioned uh, wine. Well, alcohol in general, right? In general. A lack. Yeah. Now, do you think that when you talk about nutrition for gout sufferers, do, do you think it is the fact that they're eating a lot of animal foods or that because they're eating a lot of animal foods, they're also eating very few complex carbs which which you refer to like like lentils and beans yeah. and legumes and, yeah. and things like well, that. Well yeah beans I, I recommend beans as a replacement for protein. So I'll skip a day of eating meat and have beans uh usually in a lentil soup uh or even a burrito, Mexican burrito, right? Just put beans, black beans in there and uh it fills you up. Um so um you're right. Uh, most people eat a lot of meat. It's just over, you know, it's just too high. Uh, and another culprit that we didn't talk about much is sugar. Uh, that's another culprit with gout. Uh, you have to watch your sugar intake. I recommend 25 grams daily, although the, the World Health Association will recommend around 50, 52. Uh, sugar, too much sugar will, especially fructose, high fructose corn syrup, is another culprit when it comes to gout. So, for me, as an example, I was eating lots of red meat, uh, lots of burgers, and lots of drinking lots of Cokes and having a lot of whiskey with Cokes, uh, usually Jack Daniels with Cokes. So you see the pattern there, right? Alcohol, high fructose corn syrup, red meat. Yeah. Gout. Yeah, sounds like a recipe for disaster. Yeah, and I mean, disaster. <laughs> I mean, you, you ended up developing gout, but the person next to you will end up developing, you know, metabolic syndrome and diabetes and high blood pressure and pretty much everything because no matter what we say about no one diet fits all that diet fits nobody. I mean, nobody exactly. should be it eating that way. There, there's exactly. no, excuse. And I, I had, I had a similar conversation, um, with, uh, and, you know, with, with a lot of the different uh, experts that we've had, some of them very, very well versed in, in, in diet and nutrition. And there's not a single diet that advocates for more sugar, for more processed foods. <laughs> and, exactly. Uh, that's, that's a one commonality that all, you know, phonavide, phonavide, uh diets have in common, that they will say, you know what, let's cut out the sugar, let's cut out the crap, let's cut out the processed um, you know, and, and, and then they might have certain differences in the kind of, of, of nutrient sources that they have, but they all agree that that cannot be serving us. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, what else can I add to that? Uh, yeah, uh, sugar, um, very dangerous uh, for everybody. I strongly recommend to avoid it. Uh, But it's very hard, right? Uh, At the end of the day, you don't have the time. A lot of people don't have the time, so that's why we eat more fast food. Everybody wants that quick processed food, right? They could grab off a box, open it up, and eat it. So uh, you got to eat fresh, and fresh means you got to cook and take a bit of time in your day to uh, eat better. Exactly, but that's and, and and you're absolutely right. It is a it is a double edged sword because the more the more we've actually geared and turned towards convenience, the farther away we're going from health. That's right. And yeah. and and it is a it is a tough act to 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 balance because one thing is to think you know when you're single and you care for yourself and 
you live by yourself, then it's okay. Well, you take care, you find the time and it's your priorities. But then suddenly you're, you've got work and you've got personal commitments, you've got family, you've got kids, you've got other, other things to, to do that it has to be an, a purposeful plan. You have to be intentional about these things you have i always say that 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 health is is an active pursuit and it's not something that you achieve and suddenly you go like oh yeah here i made it i'm i arrived there's like it's something that you have, you have to be to. fighting for yeah. everything you have to make the time exactly you you have to make the time you have to make the effort and you have to actually do it every day so so yeah i mean thank you once again for for mentioning that now in every episode, we normally ask all of our guests to share their top two or three pieces of actionable advice based on their knowledge and their expertise. So for those people who are listening to us right now, what would be your top two or three pieces of actionable advice that as soon as they get home, they can start thinking about or even implementing? For gout sufferers, right? Well, you, we can do both. We can do it for gout sufferers oh, okay. and then maybe if you have a bonus one for, for pretty much everyone. Well, if you suffer from gout, the top three tips I would say is uh, implement uh, uh, the diet I advocate on my site and book, which is the 80-10-10 diet as fast as you can. Drink more water. That would be number two because the more water you drink, the more uric acid your kidneys will expel. So that helps. Uh, and number three is exercise. Uh, get out there, get moving. Uh, drop the weight because a lot of gout sufferers, uh, usually when they get diagnosed, are usually obese. So lose the pounds and you'll feel better and your uric acid levels will go lower. Uh, for everybody else, uh, again, find something that, uh, write a diary. I would start with a diary uh, of everything you eat. See, uh, you know, see the patterns out. Uh, if anything bothers you, take it out. Uh, include whatever you're uh, helps you feel better. Uh, secondly, I would say, uh, go out there and exercise, uh, find the time, uh, even walking. For example, if you want to go out, find the time, even if you're too busy, go find the time, go for a walk with a friend instead of going for a coffee and sitting down with a friend and talking. Um, uh, and thirdly, I would say is, um, for everybody else. Good question. Well, we'll just we'll just take the same exercise. one. Drink, drink more water. Most of us drink aren't more drinking. Water, yeah. Most drink of us aren't water, drinking please. enough water, and you know. I personally do not drink any more Coke. I do not drink any more uh, juices. I only drink water, herbal teas, and coffee. That's it. So yeah. Yeah, there's Stick. there's really no reason to drink Coke or to drink any of those sodas. A exactly. lot of people really Useless like the, the 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 fizziness. Uh, so I, I I will drink sparkling water. I, I drink sparkling water yeah. semi regularly, if not regularly. Um, and a lot of people like these carbonated drinks. And what I normally recommend is just do fruit water and and buy one of those machines that will yeah get creative with that yeah yeah, yeah. fruit water yeah. yeah. You can Definitely. you can just get get your 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 fizzy or you fix. can boil some tea and put it in the fridge and that could be another great refreshment. Uh, no sugar, no calories. For sure, for sure. Well, thank you so much. So, uh, Spears, I want to acknowledge you and uh, recognize you for number one taking the time to being here in the show and sharing yeah, your, you your experience and and your expertise with our listeners. And I know that you're very focused on on gout sufferers, but in reality, one thing that I've noticed is that pretty much whenever we have somebody here who's focused about this one area and they give the recommendations, they fit anyone. So a lot of people, this, this is an approach that a lot of people can probably try. And, and like I said, it's probably not something that I will be trying because it's something that I've, that I've kind of like gone down that path and it didn't serve me, but it doesn't mean that it cannot serve somebody who's listening to us. We've had, we've had more than a few people who, who, who advocate uh, eating this way and they seem to be doing okay. And I think that, each person is 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 the perfect judge of how they feel. They just need to be aware of it, and 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 they need to be truthful with themselves. And if it's serving them, they can stick to it. And if they it's not serving them, it's it's fine to say, you know what, I tried it, it didn't work for me, and and then move on. But going back to it, I, I do want to acknowledge you for for the work you've been doing. I know that you've you've really built a community. You've put together, uh, or you've you've given resources to a lot of people who are suffering with gout. That I'm sure you've you've been really a godsend uh for many of them so thank you so much for 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 doing that yeah thank you for having me one last tip also talk to your doctor do your blood work on a yearly or by uh two or twice a year check your metrics that's another recommendation i would make for everybody out there for any diet you're on 
uh, check your cholesterol levels, your sugar levels, your uric acid levels, and you'll see if your diet uh, is optimal for you or not. Yeah, for sure. I couldn't agree more. I, I always try to emphasize that, that anything that you learn here has to be, has to be put into context by your doctor. Because one thing is, is to hear specific medical advice or health advice. It's not really medical advice. It's health advice or health recommendations. And then you go to your doctor and say, like, listen, I heard this and I think it might work because they're the ones that know your specific you know, symptoms, history, uh, proneness, sure. uh, benefits, everything. They, they, they know it so they can point you in the right direction. Thank you for, uh, for, for bringing that up. Now, before we say goodbye, where can people go and, and find out more about you? If somebody's listening to us, they looked up and they found out yeah. something about gout, where can they go and, and, and get in touch with you? My, my website, which is goutandyou.com. It's that simple. So go there. Uh, I have plenty of articles. Uh, you can sign up for the free newsletter and uh, stay up to date on the latest uh, trends uh, involving uh, gout, uh, the, re- the latest research studies uh, I was published on social media. Um, and you'll be in touch uh, uh, with me if you want. You can email me a uh, comment and I always answer to all the questions. Perfect, perfect. And what's the name of your book? Uh, gout in you the ultimate gout diet and cookbook you can find it on amazon uh, print or ebook or on our website at goutingyou.com perfect well we're going to make sure if you're listening to this uh, all of the links that uh, that spirit just, just shared uh they're going to be down in the in the episode description if you're watching youtube you know what the description is if you're if you're listening to this on just just scroll on your podcast app and you're going to find them there and if not just go on over to dr e.show and you're going to see all the show notes and everything that we've just been discussing. One final question, Spiro, before we say goodbye. Did you have a good time here in the Highwood Health? Yeah, this was great. Yeah, I loved it. Thank you very much for having me. Not a problem. That's what I like to hear. For everyone listening, thank you for tuning in once again. This has been a phenomenal episode. You've been listening to Spiro and Dr. E talk about gout and ways to treat it. I will see you here next week. Remember, you're on the Highwood Health and I'm your guide to get you there. Thank you for listening to Dr. E's Highway to Health show, helping you learn the science of living ageless. Did you enjoy the show? Please like, share, and subscribe where you listen to podcasts. Dr. E wants to hear from you. Go to dre.show. Again, that's dre.show. Until next time, this is Dr. E's Highway to Health, helping you live ageless. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. What was your favorite takeaway? Please share this episode with anyone you know who's affected by gout. And do you agree with Spira's dietary approach? Tag me on Instagram or connect with me on LinkedIn and let me know what you think. By the way, remember that you can find the links to everything we discussed in this episode in the show notes. Just scroll down to this episode's description on your podcast app and tap on the appropriate link. And before you go, remember to check out my new coaching programs at dre.show forward slash coach. See the different options, learn more, ask questions, and decide whether or not health coaching is right for you and your goals. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. You've been listening to Spiro Caloris and Dr. E talk about gout and how to manage it through diet and lifestyle interventions. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you here next week. And remember, you are on the highway to health, and I'm your guide to get you there.